Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Flooding in tray column, part 2, jet flooding, consequences and prevention. In this video, you will learn what is the effect of flooding, how do you detect the onset of flooding. Under the effect of flooding, you will learn what is the effect on separation efficiency, what will be the ultimate damage to the column internals. Under the detection, you will learn what are the monitoring and control mechanisms. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. Subscribe now before you forget. In the part 1 of this series on flooding in tray column, you learnt what is jet flooding and what causes jet flooding. You learn in this video what happens when the tray column flood. Let us start with a situation in your tray column where the column has reached the flood limit and the vapor and liquids loads are such that the tower begins to flood. In this situation, what changes are happening in the column? What it will lead to? Let us move on to find out. Effect of Entrainment Flooding Flooding is an unusual and undesired operational event that needs utmost and urgent attention. Why is that? The first noticeable effect of flooding is loss of separation efficiency. Flooding causes some of the already separated liquid which has more of a less volatile component than the tray above to mix with the liquid in the tray above. It counteracts the moss transfer process and reduces the tray efficiency. The net effect is contamination of overhead product by the carryover of non-volatile impurities. The product quality is paramount importance in a production process. This plot is an illustration of tray efficiency versus column throughput. The column tray efficiency increases with throughput until it reaches a limit of capacity. Thereafter, the flooding commences and the tray efficiency drops. Also note that there is a stable operating range indicated by the blue color dotted line. The quality of the product cannot be compromised. The column is designed for both production rate and product specification. Hence, flooding leads to production losses. Other consequences of jet flooding Internal trade damage Internal trade damage is one of the consequences of higher vapor gas rate and resulting flooding. Shown in this figure is a sieve tray 
with hydraulic force acting downward on the tray. The net hydraulic force under flooded condition acting downward on the tray may be high enough to cause downward rupture and tray damage. To understand why tray damage occurs, let me throw some light on tray design aspects. As a standard engineering practice, the trays are designed for a pressure drop per tray of 16.5 millibar, which equals 168 mm of water column. This corresponds to pressure drop of 0.25 psi. This differential pressure is from the strength point of view, strength of the tray. Shown in this sketch is a typical sieve tray. To facilitate installation and maintenance, tray are usually made in thickness of 2 mm. Hence, any downward force acting on the tray during upset conditions such as flooding has to be considered in relation to the strength of a 2 mm thick plate. Typically, a tray reaches flood at a pressure drop per tray of around 10 to 13 millibar, which equals 102 to 132 mm of water column. Having seen the ultimate tray design pressure drop from the strength point of view, and a typical pressure drop at flooding point, let me now tell you the actual design pressure drop of an operating tray. Trays are designed to operate with pressure drop per tray ranges from 5 to 8 millibar, which equals 51 to 82 millimeter of water column. What is the standard tray spacing? The standard tray spacing is 18 inches, which equals 450 mm. On a working tray, there are two forces acting on it. The upward force due to tray differential pressure. This is a dry gas differential pressure and a downward force due to the liquid head that is a hold upon the tray. The difference is a standard of 160 mm water column is for vertical stressing in both direction, upward and downward. During operation, the vertical differential pressure caused by the vapor flow partly counteracts the downward force of the tray liquid loading. The industrial standards for dry gas pressure drop is in the order of 50 mm water column, that is 2 inches of water. With this design information, in mind, let us see how vertical forces change as the tray begins to flood. If the dry hole pressure drop across the tray due to vapor rate is 50 mm water column, then the upward force will be 50 mm of water column. This figure illustrates the upward and downward forces acting on the tray and then resultant force and its direction. If the vapor rate is providing 50 mm of water column of upward force due to gas pressure drop across the tray, 
and the liquid level on the tray is 50 mm of water column providing a downward force then the net force on the tray would be zero. For sieve and bubble trays with fixed opening, if the vapor flow rate is doubled, the pressure drop will increase by a factor of 4. This is due to the fact that the flow rate is proportional to square root of differential pressure. Now let us see what happens to the forces on the tray under the flooded condition. Let us assume the tray is flooded to 250 mm of water column. That is to say, there is a liquid level due to flooding to the extent of 250 mm water column. At a given nominal gas load providing upward force of 50 mm water column across the tray due to the hole, the tray flooded up to 250 mm water column, what will be the net downward force? The net downward force is 250 minus 50 equals 200 mm of water column. This will exceed the maximum reasonable value of 160 mm of water column. This figure illustrates the forces acting on the tray under the flooded condition. The net downward force of 200 mm of water column will lead to tray buckling damage and tray dislocation. We call it downward rupturing of the tray. It is the worst thing that can happen in a tray column. If the liquid has filled the entire tray spacing of 450 mm due to flooding, the downward force will be 450 minus 50 400 mm of water column. This is the worst case scenario, your flooding is left unnoticed. As a matter of fact, the froth on the tree will have volume fraction of gas during operation due to vapor bubbles, that is two phase flow which depends on the liquid and gas flow rate. We may assume 50% gas volume fraction for instance. Hence, downward force will be roughly half of the liquid height, still much higher than the upward force by the gas. Column operation for long under flooded condition would be detrimental to the trees and increase the downtime and maintenance costs. There are several instances of real world flooding in columns that has led to tray damage in the industries. Not all flooding leads to tray damage. It happens in only severe cases. These instances are leading points for users and process engineers. Detection and prevention of flooding. To take timely action and prevent the consequences of flooding such as loss of efficiency and internal damage, the column needs continuous monitoring. Flooding is detected by monitoring 1. Column pressure drop, 2. Column temperatures, 3. Column base level. Flooding can be detected by measuring the pressure drop across a section of trees along the length of the column. It is usual to provide the monitoring of differential pressure across the column in a tray tower.
flooding can occur above the feed tray or below the feed tray or may even occur across the entire column. To identify and locate the flooding zone, it is better to measure the pressure drop across the rectification section and stripping section separately using locally available pressure transmitters. This figure illustrates a distribution column working under normal condition. When the vapor liquid loads or within the design limit, the differential pressure as indicated by the, the differential pressure transmitter will be normal. This figure illustrates a distribution column where there is a flooding occurring above the feed tray. The liquid holdup in the trays above the feed has increased. Due to this, the pressure drop will increase above the feed tray. It can be observed from the differential pressure transmitter in the rectification section. A plot of pressure drop versus vapor flow rate would be required to determine at which vapor flow rate tower begins to flood. This is a typical pressure drop curve that will be obtained when you track the trend of increase in pressure drop against the vapor load when the tower is flooding. You can observe there are three zones in this graph. The first zone is a stable operation zone. The second zone is an incipient flooding zone. The third zone is a flooding zone where the column flooding is taking place till it is flooded. Monitoring tray temperature. Temperature profile across the column is another useful tool to detect the flooding phenomena. There will be increasing temperature in the trays getting flooded due to changes in composition. This figure shows the temperature measuring instruments installed on the trays. The increase in temperature in the tray can be monitored as a trend in the tray in the flooded zone. As liquid is held up on the tray due to flooding, liquid downflow traffic gets impacted. There will be a reduction in the liquid flow to the trays below the flooded tray to the extent of liquid accumulation taking place. Thus, the liquid coming to the column base will gradually start to decrease. This can be monitored by the liquid level indicator and level control at the column bottom. Flooding prevention. Flooding can be prevented by not exceeding the maximum allowable pressure drop across the column. Tray suppliers provide the pressure drop per tray as part of their hydraulic calculations. This should be the base for column vapor liquid loading. Do not exceed these limits. There is always an attempt to get maximum production output from existing column. This should be done under the guidance of experts so that you do not exceed 85% jet flood limit.
Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.